What's going on guys? So I've been wanting to do this video for a little while and actually it's going to be covering the differences between some extra thin modeling cement and super glue because I've seen a lot of questions come up and a whole lot of statements that are pretty much untrue in a lot of these forums and groups and stuff like that and I want to talk about my experiences, the way I've used these things and how you can definitely use them to your advantage and what not to do with them because uh, you can definitely uh, choose the wrong thing and end up causing damage. Now what I have here is the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, pretty much famous in the Gumpla modeling community for obvious reasons. And basically a lot of people get this and uh, use the crap out of it. I actually have used quite a lot as you can see here. Uh, the level is a little bit low. And uh, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at a lot of different uh, hobby stores. If you get it at your hobby town or whatever is what it is. And here we just have the basic, the original super glue. And it is a cyanoacrylate. So if we refer to anything as a CA glue, there that is short for cyanoacrylate. Now, this is the go to for a lot of things, um, including gluing your fingers together <laughs> and basically home. Home, quick home repairs and stuff like that. Whereas this is strictly for model making and uh, permanently making things stick together that are made of plastic. <laughs> and just for uh, showing it off here, this is Instaset. And this is actually from, I forgot the name of the company, I think BSI, but I can't remember the proper name of it. But this is Instaset from, or it's an accelerator to be used with crazy glue or cyanoacrylate glue and clearly I picked it up at Hobby Town as I showed it you can get it online you can get it on Amazon all the other things and it says for all CA glues there are several different types of CA glue but I'm gonna cover just this one because it is pretty much the one that everybody can get their hands on all right guys so first and foremost we're gonna go with super glue as well it's pretty much a mainstay of modeling and just handyman work stuff like that and usually comes in small tubes like this and uh, in fact, this is what my wife uses to do her nails because that is what this is good for. And just right off the bat, the differences between a glue and a cement or an adhesive as it were, uh, a glue is more of an additive bond. It's going to be the thing that holds things together. And that's a really, that's an important distinction because as I'm will demonstrate with a little piece of polystyrene and a little piece of uh, runner, it will actually show that when you use this, you get a little drop out there, this, it will actually become the thing that holds stuff together. Now, there's a couple cool facts about super glue one if you want a quick reaction and actually quick setting you can in fact use water it will in fact react super fast to water it also will react to the carbon in your breath or carbon dioxide in your breath so blowing on it will actually accelerate the curing process. Now usually it doesn't take very long. You see it's still wet so we don't really want to mess with it. But as we'll see here in a second it is purely an, an additive bond and it is the only thing that is holding the two pieces of plastic together. See look after a few seconds it already let go. So that'll show you right there that it's already not necessarily doing anything. However, just for fun, let me scooch it out here where we can see. Grab the Instaset and just give it a quick squirt. And I did it this way so you can actually see. Now that stuff does have fumes and you don't want to use a lot of it. I have uh, myself gotten very, um, I don't want to say high, but I definitely had a huge headache. It did irritate my sinuses and stuff like that. So you don't want to use a ton of this in a closed area and it will work. This is, will actually work to um, bond things in and of itself. So just be careful. But in this case, you can see it's already set. So that's pretty cool. 
And I have used this uh, for quite some time. I've used CA glue for quite some time as well. Now you can see there it's still got the liquid, you probably see it, uh, on the thing. It will dry off eventually. Or you can just blow dry it real quick, it will go away. You can feel it on your fingers though. And uh, just a another fun fact about, uh, about super glue, the reason it sticks your finger together so well and so fast is it's actually wicking the moisture from your skin and using that to bond. As I said, water is actually an accelerant for this. So that's why it will actually hold your finger together so well. Now you can see that is nice and on there, it won't even come apart. Let's see if I can just knock it out of myself. Now the only thing about uh, super glue is it's not a permanent bond and it is not a very strong bond. It actually has a very low shear level, which means it doesn't take a ton of force to break it loose. Now mind you, I did just glue this, but it is in fact super dry. Like it's not even coming off on my fingers, but I can easily just snap it because it actually is very, very fragile. Now you can tell that it's definitely an additive glue because what's left behind other than two plastics, the glue itself. So that is one reason why it is an additive. Now it does have its benefits and things you can use it for, such as temporarily holding something together while you're trying to bond it otherwise. Now in the modeling community, you can definitely use this to hold things that aren't going to need to shear, that aren't going to need to move, I should say. You don't want to put it on joints or holding together uh, things that need to move. Now, there is the old adage that you can definitely use this to beef up some joints if you need to, if you've got a loose ball joint or something like that, which actually I have that problem. So on this guy right here, the Planet X uh, Summonus, I believe it is, he has incredibly loose ball joints in his ankles. And you can actually see here all the kind of cruddiness around that ankle right there. That ball joint is super loose and the crud that's all built up in there is entirely super glue. So you can see it all right through there. So I did actually take this part up, take this piece apart, coat the ball joint and let it dry and then reinserted it. Now one thing you can definitely do is just beef it up like that. Another thing you can do, because it does take a little bit of time to actually solidify, you can technically mold the ball joint a little bit better. So get your glue on there, let it dry to some degree, and then put it in and move it around inside the socket that the ball joint will be in and it will actually help shape that ball to fit better. Now this one also has glue on it. It is actually much stiffer so this one's going to need reapplication. You can of course use nail polish or clear, clear nail polish which more or less does the exact same thing or you can use a uh, pledge or clear coat or something like that which will build up uh, a, a tougher surface as it were because the, the super glue will eventually wear away over time as it is you know not a very good strong bond and another thing you can definitely do I can't demonstrate it here but any any uh, car <laughs> any guys who've ever done body work on cars this stuff can act just like Bondo Bondo if you don't know it's a filler you know you it's a two-part filler you add the pasty liquidy stuff and then you add a couple drops of hardener and you shape it real quick and you can use it to fill in holes and gaps and such and things and then sand it all down to give a nice smooth finish to something that may or not be that problem you can do the same thing more or less with super glue and I have done this but in this case you don't necessarily have to add anything extra because you can add this for quick set if you need to or you can also add baking soda. If you got some baking soda laying around, you can literally just throw your glue down and if you need to fill a gap, throw the baking soda in there. It will not only help strengthen it, it will add as filler and give you something to sand down. Now I have used super glue to do filling jobs. So if you guys are familiar with the bear guy family the little petite guy this is the first one we ever got and this guy is definitely known for having really big seam lines and this one was actually done by my wife 
so it's a little bit better on the seams. However, the head right here has always had this horrendous seam. You can, you can see my thumbnail catching it very, very easily. Now, this is a normal petite guy put together, no problem. Sanded very nicely, I will give her tons of credit for that. What we have here, in comparison, is my custom petite guy. That's actually what I call an angel guy. The backpack is elsewhere. Uh, I will review that a different day. However, what I wanted to show you was this. No, no catch. You can see the seam because it's still there. However, I filled the seam with super glue and for a very long time, you can even see the unbroken shine going across it. Used super glue to completely fill the seam and then sanded it for hours. And like I said, you can see the complete unbroken shine there. Whereas on this guy, you can see the gap. So you can totally use super glue as a filler for things like that. Now, that brings up the idea of seam lines because that's what a lot of people want to know how you give her the seam lines. And on this guy, I just used super glue. So you can see the seams right there on the arms. You can see the seam here on the leg. You can see once again, it is virtually unbroken with the minor, minor spots here and there. Now, this is not necessarily the best way to do it, but this is definitely a way to do it. So these seams are actually glued in with a tiny bit of super glue, because it's all I had. Tiny bit of super glue, and then sanded to the nines, basically using it as a filler and a new surface, and then sanding the crap out of it. And that is actually a perfectly good way to do it. Um, not the only way to do it, but it's certainly a great way to do it. Now, a, and a major example of this is my custom Barbatos. Right here on this shoulder, I had attempted to sand in a, a feature mark, basically, like a big groove. And I hated it, and I couldn't replace the shoulder. So what did I do? I just used a little bit of plastic shavings and plastic dust with super glue and completely filled in that shoulder joint or that, that shoulder armor and you can see it's definitely rough like you can see the gaps you can see the air bubbles however you can't feel them it is sanded very much you can see all the way up to that line is where that glue is now because it is essentially clear you can tell it does more or less fill in and you will retain a lot of the actual plastic color. But you can see just how well it can be shaped and things like that. That's a very good use of it for filling in holes. Now you can see here, obviously I didn't seam line the whole thing because this is an extra part that connects to the, the two uh, sides of the shoulder armor. This guy is definitely not finished by any means, but if I do finish it, this big seam line will be removed. But that, that's a good use of super glue. However, I've used super glue on other parts of this same model, and I would not trust the bond to stay permanent. So this part right here, even though it has a little bit of an insert, is actually glued in. These parts right here are actually just glued on. Same thing for these ears right here. These added it on ears. These are all just super glued on. However, I don't want to trust that. So there is one way you can do it. You can totally just super glue it in on one side to hold it in place. And then you could totally come in later with, now mind you, once it's dry, uh, come in and you can use a little bit of the Tamiya Extra Thin or even the regular cement either way. And it will actually create a true bond. Because that is one thing the super glue is good for is making an instant bond. Mind you, that part is not glued in and continues to come out. Um, and I have totally knocked off parts before that I've glued on with super glue. Because once again, especially if it gets in a very small, thin area, it will become super brittle and there won't be anything holding it together. Now, as for the Tamiya Extra Thin, it comes in 
usually glass jars, something along these lines, or any other cements that are um, acetone based, or um, there's a there's a very different version. It's, they're all chemically based. That is definitely a thing. But this is butyl acetate or acetone. It has both. That is the big difference between a cement like this and a cyanoarchalate glue. Because what this is doing is creating a chemical bond and is melting your plastics together to actually keep one piece. So that is a huge differential. And I've used this many a time for gluing all kinds of stuff together, including working on the uh, custom local type. There is a ton of scratch building. Scratch builders swear by this or any other kind of super thin cement because that's what it does. It creates a bond between things. Now mine has gotten slightly contaminated by a little bit of paint because that acetone will eat through paint. And I had to use this on a painted part recently. And just to show that off, if you're not following the Life of Shoki vlogs, it is also <laughs> this Planet X Summonus. And you can see right here on this joint, how there's no paint left on it. This particular circular joint on the tail here broke in three places. So it broke here, it broke back here, and it broke on the back side around here. Now, I'm being super careful with it. You can actually see where it split right there. Um, just because it is a translucent plastic and they're not known for their strength retention, as it were. Now, I did glue all the pieces back together using the ultra thin cement. I left it sitting for at least a day. And then I took the pin out of here, sanded down any irregularities, put it back together, and it's definitely a part I would trust a little bit better, but I also sanded down the paint to reduce friction because otherwise the joint itself is still very fragile because it is still translucent. I'm being very, very careful with it. Now, this over here is the way it was originally. You can see the paint all the way around it, stuff like that. Now that would not have been a fix for super glue because it would have been an additive bond. It would have been merely on the outside of any of the pieces and it would have been much different and still just as brittle to fix. I would never have tried to use super glue to fix that. Now as a demonstration, we'll take our same piece from earlier. I have another small piece of polystyrene and what I will do, I'm going to have to look off the camera screen for this because I can't see it. Alright, so it has a tiny applicator brush as most of these do and just going to add a little bit in the center here, going to add a little bit over here and hopefully there's not too much super glue still on that, it should be okay. And this is either going to work or it's not going to work stick the pieces together and wait <laughs> okay now it is definitely not a quick setting thing by any means but what I can demonstrate if that piece isn't going to work I have another strip here just for fun I have another piece that is just laying around and what this stuff does whether it's the acetone type or a slightly different type they all use the same kind of chemical base to break down the polystyrene and in fact melt it so since those pieces were fairly smooth it should be good now if you use super glue on this because this is a super smooth thing it will become incredibly fragile very difficult to keep any kind of strength and adhesion. Now I'm gonna give those a couple minutes. Now while we wait on these pieces to kind of dry off, I'm gonna show off something I've done before. And this was actually a piece that I did for the custom part. I was trying to build up a definite, you know, a definite thickness here. And you can see it's all three or three pieces of the same type of styrene sheet thrown together. You can see the layers a little bit better there. 
and all of this was just ultra vent cement spread across here and then just sandwiched together with a little bit of pressure now what I want to show off hopefully it'll work fine go ahead and give it a quick sand Let's see if it makes a big difference here because one of the big advantages of using these type of glues to do things you can see here while it's not perfect it is essentially now one piece of plastic now if you get good coverage like this one wasn't perfect it's one of the first pieces I ever tried and also it wasn't very even so if I really wanted to I just take a bit of cement run it right across that little edge and let it totally dry and then I can sand it down now it will make your pieces soft for a bit so you really definitely want to make sure that they uh, they're totally hardened now let's see here if we can check this piece all right so that's already begun to adhere now I want to show this part and many of you who have used this probably have seen this before so you saw before how when I pulled on the the piece of runner how the glue just broke but this is what I wanted to show this stretchiness also it's way harder to pull there's a lot more friction a lot more strength there and you can see the stretchiness there coming out of the plastic and even if I push it down you can now see that it definitely melted the pieces of styrene together now what I just did there was make a mess for myself later if this was going to be a permanent piece because now that glue I would need to reapply more stuff this is just me demonstrating so you can apply a little bit more cement and maybe even melt that down a little bit to reshape it if you need to but that piece eventually will become one entire thing and will become the same piece of plastic and if you see here this is now structurally together and structure is really what it comes down to with the cyanoacrylate while you can use it for body filler and stuff like that you never want to use it as a structural piece anything that needs to be strong like if I pushed on something like this with CA glue it would probably snap off fairly easy now mind you I'm not this is freshly glued so I'm not going to go crazy but that is already a very strong bond so two clean cut pieces together with just a little bit of that glue and if you apply it to both sides it'll react a little bit quicker and if you really wanted to knock out if there's any weird gaps or anything like that you could just run each edge so that part is essentially now one new shape of plastic now I have used this to build up a very specific part actually many very specific parts on my custom local type which you guys will see hopefully fairly soon but I would not have trusted super glue to do that whereas if you would like to seam line something this is more or less how you would want to do it you would use the ultra thin to glue two seam line or two seams together such as a front leg cover or a thigh piece or a shoulder piece you could totally do that and then if the edges are not perfect say there's maybe a tiny gap or something you could probably use a little bit of cement and build it up or if you're going to paint it anyways use a tiny bit of super glue after it's already been dried use a little bit to fill in the gap or cover the seam and then sand it smooth just as I did with this guy and once again you can look at it as an unbroken line if I told if I just went and painted this you would see no seam lines on this more than likely except maybe right through here they're visible because they're not covered with anything yeah this one is not perfect by any means the the legs are a little bit better you can't really feel those this arm you can't really feel it the head you definitely cannot feel it so if I painted this guy a different color entirely you would likely see just a perfectly round little cue ball so that is the difference between using 
your super glue to bond things and a cement to bond things. Now, if there's any other questions, definitely look it up. Certain things, uh, certain cements will work better for different plastic. They also have rubber cements. They have ABS cements, where this will not work on ABS. It's not meant to do that. Now, the main complaint and main concern I've seen in these groups when people are trying to glue pieces together or seam line, for instance, is melting. And there was one person in particular who I saw said they used super glue to try to seam line something and it started to melt the plastic. Now, I've seen no reason for that to have happened, to be totally honest. I don't believe they had super glue. I believe they had a tube of cement of some sort. Now, Testers has a model cement that comes in a blue tube, I believe. And I think they have a slightly different cement that comes in a red tube. I could be wrong. I used to use the blue tube stuff all the time. And that would definitely melt the plastics because it is a cement. It is meant to be a chemical bond. It's meant to melt two pieces of plastics together. If something melted from the use of super glue, I honestly can't help you because there's no way that should have happened. Now, can this have an exothermic reaction? That means it caused something to heat up with certain materials. Yes, but usually it's with more organic materials. That's why if you get it on your skin, you actually feel a little bit of heat. It does actually have an exothermic reaction. If you use it on cotton or a few other things, it will have some really weird reactions. But it can use, you can totally use it. I've used it on some things. But uh, for fabrics and things like that, you don't really want to use super glue. If you can help it, you want to use glues that are definitely made for that. So that, that's kind of the important thing. Use the proper glue for the thing you want to accomplish. And... Do a tiny bit of research. If you're working with polystyrene, like a lot of model kits are, that's what this is. You want to call it Plug Plate, whatever. Plug Plate is a brand, by the way. This is polystyrene sheet. That is what is there. That's what this is meant to glue together. And there's different cements for different things. It's really easy to check what you're working with. If you have a Gumpla model, the runners usually state, I say usually, state what type of plastic it is it'll say pe which is polyethylene ps which is polystyrene those different things or abs even all those things are different plastics and will react differently with paints and will react differently with glues so just do a tiny bit of research guys and it will definitely help your cause but for the most part i hope this showed you at least a couple different uses of these glues how you should be using them and how you should definitely not use them. <laughs> I wish I had more examples of what not to do, but I've fixed most of those things. So between my models that I've done and just the minor demonstrations here, I hope you learned something. If you have any other questions, and I hope I can answer them, leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you guys later. And remember, as always, to keep on building.